Hey guys, in today's video, I want to show you how to connect to a Mongo database using PyMongo in Flask. So I've made this video before, but it was a little outdated. So I'm updating this for the year 2019. So I hope this can help everyone going forward. And if things change again, then I'll create another video for like 2020 or 2021, whenever it updates again. So Flask PyMongo is pretty easy to use. So in this video, I'll cover connecting to the database. And in the next video, I'll cover how to actually do some things with that database. So the first thing that we need to do is actually create a Mongo database. I'll be using MLab, but whatever you're using should work as long as you can create a MongoDB. So you can have it hosted on your machine locally, or you can use some other service. But I like MLab because it's easy to use and it's free for small databases. So I already have logged into my account, so I'll go to create new. And then I'll leave it on Amazon Web Services. I'll select Sandbox, that's the free one and continue. I'll pick US East for the region and I'll give it a name. So let's call this pretty printed Mongo 2019. And then just submit order. And then once this is done, I need to create a user for my database. So I'll go to the users tab here and add a database user, Anthony, and then I'll give Anthony a password. It's just password one, which you'll see once I put it into the code. Okay, so I'm done. I have the database set up, I have a user set up, and everything is up and running. So it only took maybe less than a minute to get this working. So now let's go into the code. So I need to install a few things. Obviously I need to install Flask and Flask PyMongo, but I'm also going to install python.env just so I can organize my project in a certain way. So I'll use pip inf to install everything. Flask PyMongo or python.env. So python-env. I'll install those three things. And I should have install here so it actually works. Okay, so if you're using a regular virtual environment, then you can install things with pip. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you create a virtual environment and you install these three things. So Flask, Flask by Mongo, and Python.env. If you don't want Python.env, you can set up the configuration how you want, but I'll be doing it in a certain way in this video because I want this to be a little flexible. And while we wait for things to install, I just want to mention that if you want to get the Flask cheat sheet, you can go to my website, prettyprintit.com slash Flask cheat sheet. It just has some common things that you do in Flask so you can refer to this PDF so you can know how to do them. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to get it as well. So it looks like it's almost done installing. Should only take one more second. Okay, so I'll start up my virtual environment. So pip in shell. And inside of my project directory here, what I'll do is I'll create a couple of .env files. So the first is going to be Flask env. And I want to set the Flask app and the Flask environment. So the Flask app is just going to be the name of the folder that I create to have my project files in it. So something that is a subdirectory of this directory that I'm in right now and the environment is going to be development. So for the Flask app, I'll call this um, PyMongo example. So it can be whatever you want. So new folder, PyMongo example. So this is where all my Flask code is going to go. So the second thing I'll do is I'll create another file called .env. And in this file, I'm going to have the Mongo database URI. So Mongo URI, and I used to get this from my database. So here on the home screen, I have the URI here. So just copy that and paste it in here as a string. And then I need to update the DB user and the DB password with the user that I just created. So the DB user is Anthony and the DB password is password one. So whatever it is for your case, just update it and put this in the .env file. So now that I have those two files done, I can start working on the app itself. So I'll create a new file inside of my PyMongo example, a dunder init. So underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore dot pi. And I'll go ahead and just 
kind of start things up. So I know I need to import uh, the values from .env as environment variables. So I'll import OS and then I need to import Flask. So from Flask, import Flask and I'll create an app here and I'll instantiate Flask and I'll return the Flask object at the end. Okay, so now to handle the configuration before I do anything more specific with PyMongo, uh, I'll set a default configuration object and I'll set it equal to a file called settings in my project. So PyMongo example.settings and I need to go ahead and create that file. So settings.py and in settings.py, I'm simply going to uh, import OS and then set the Mongo URI equal to the environment variable Mongo URI here, which I set in the .env file. So environ git Mongo URI. And I just realized I don't need OS in this one because I'm doing the environment import in settings.py. So now that I have that and I have the settings.py, the configuration is mostly taken care of. I just need to configure from that object. So app.config from object and then config object. So I won't reference this directly. I'll just use the default, which I just created. So this config object configures the app here. Okay, so now that I have that, I can go ahead and start working with PyMongo. So what I'll do is I'll create another file called extensions, and I'll put the PyMongo code in here to at least instantiate it without the app. So from flask underscore PyMongo, import PyMongo, so capital P, lowercase y, and then capital M for PyMongo, the class, and then I'll just instantiate it. So just like that. So I'll call this Mongo the object variable, and then it's going to be PyMongo. And I'm going to import this in the init file. So the Dunder init file, I'm going to import that. So uh, from dot extensions, import Mongo, and now initialize it on the app. So Mongo dot init app, uh, this should be app. Okay, so it's imported from the extensions file, and then I'm initializing it with the app object itself. The reason why I'm using it in extensions file is I want this to be um, expandable if I decide to create future videos on this. So I'm just setting this up to have a somewhat decent project structure. Um, other extensions can go in here. So let's say you, use, you were using Flask login or Flask bcrypt or Flask WTF, you would put all those in here and instantiate them in the same way. And then you would import them uh, in your dunder init file here and then initialize them. So the last thing I need to do is create a place where I can actually view this. So I'm going to create a file called, uh, let's call this views. No, how about main? So I'll create a blueprint called main in here. So in main, what I'll do is from flask import blueprints. And then I also want to import that Mongo object from extensions. So from dot extensions import Mongo, and then I'll create the blueprint. And just know if you don't want to go through the process of creating this folder structure, you don't have to. But like I said, I want to make sure this is um, easy to work with in the future if I decide to make more videos. So for my blueprint, I'll start with a route on the index, and I'll call this index. And here's where we get to work with uh, Flask Pi Mongo. So what I want to do is I want to create a user collection. So I'll create a variable called user collection. And I'm going to take the Mongo object and then use mongo.db.users. So .db is what you need after Mongo. And then anything that follows is the collection that you want to work with. And because this is a NoSQL database, I can create collections on the fly. So I don't have a collection called users yet. So if you look here, I have no collections. But by just referencing users like this, and then by doing something with it, I will create a user's collection in my database because it doesn't exist yet. So now that I have that user collection, I can go ahead and add a user. So user collection dot insert, and I just need to pass a dictionary. So I'll give it a name and the name of the person is Anthony, me. And then I'll return a header saying added a user. Okay, so that's it. Let's see if this works.
So I just need to use flask run. And let's see, debug mode is off. So it looks like I'm not in the right directory. Let's see, no, I am. Let me just make sure everything is spelled correctly. So I'll go to the flask in V and this should be flask env not flask environment okay so let's try this again flask run okay so debug mode is on so that's working so now i can go to my app i'll go to the url it's not found and that's because i need to <laughs> register the blueprint so just one more thing that needs to be done so app.register blueprint main and i need to import that main so from dot main import main register the blueprint server should restart and i'll run it again and i see added a user so now i'll go to mongo db or imlab to look at my mongo db i'll refresh And I see a new collection called users, and it has one document. So if I open this and take a look, I see my name and I see an ID there. So now I can just add a different name here. Let's say I want to add Brian. I just need to run this page again, which adds a user. And then I can refresh. And I see Brian. And of course, if I wanted to do that, multiple times. So Christina, Derek, just run it one more time. And then refresh. And we see the additional users here. So if you can do all this, that means you've connected to the database successfully. Uh, if it doesn't work, then you'll get an error like this. So let me just change the environment file. So I'll mess up the configuration a little bit. I'll remove the Y in my name and restart the server because it doesn't restart automatically when you change the configuration here. And I'll try to run it again. And I should get an error. And I see authentication failed. So we know that my username and password isn't correct. And if I change the server or the name of the database, I should get a slightly different error. Now it looks like it will continue to get the authentication failed error. So if anything is wrong in your URI, then it won't work. So make sure that Everything is set up correctly when you go and get the URI. So that's it for this video. Like I said, in the next video, I'll cover actually doing some more interesting things with the database. But as long as you can create this collection and insert users, then you know you can actually interface with the database. And then from that point forward, it just depends on what exactly you want to do with the database itself. So if you have any questions about this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you want to get the code for this video, I'll have a link in the description as well. And um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.